Hello, friends and family, and welcome back to yet another hour of crippling anxiety meditation. <laughs> I'm just going to keep calling it that. Um, same caveats as usual. I am not a meditation teacher, and this is not meditation instruction. This is just conversation about meditation. Um, in the last video, I discussed this idea of uh, applying a healthy dose of skepticism um, when investigating meditation and trying meditation techniques or uh, working with new meditation teachers. I would like to extend this to a specific category today. Um, and that category is something that I've come to term bubblegum zen. I'm sure you've all encountered it uh, to varying degrees. Um, it comes in the form of books and philosophy often. And then when it is applied to meditation, it becomes particularly mystical. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever read um, Illusions or The Alchemist um, or any other sort of um, very bare allegorical stories. Um, these almost qualify. <clears throat> but Bubblegum Zen is specifically this one idea that gets blown up in all sorts of different ways. And the idea is essentially that the problem is already solved, that you're already there. Um, there's nothing to do. There's no one to be. There's no change to make. Everything is perfect just as it is. Um, and I, I actually heard this once in uh, in a zendo. Um, I was living in Chicago, and a friend and I went to a zendo to see if we would like to meditate there. Um, the instructor was a nun, and she actually used this terminology. She described walking through um, the park by the lake and having a moment of clarity that everything is perfect just as it is. I think I would beg to differ. <laughs> I think um, if there's anything that the, the world is teaching us right now, it's that there are a lot of improvements that we could be making um, better sooner than later, in fact. Um, sitting around doing nothing and telling ourselves that everything is just fine um, is one variation of bubblegum zen. Um, it's certainly not the only variation. Uh, a lot of the other variations of bubblegum zen come in the form of self-contradictory meditation instruction. So meditation instruction which begins with you don't need anybody, you don't need anything, you don't need a teacher, you don't need a technique, you don't need a guru. Um, all of these things are meaningless. Um, and then proceeds to give you a technique <laughs> and ideas and that person, whoever he or she may be, um, ends up becoming a guru of sorts. Um, better I think to begin with, this is the teacher, this is the technique he or she is teaching me, and I fully accept um, that for the duration of the teaching, however long that is, um, I will give it a fair go and try it and see if it's beneficial. Um, this this perspective of kind of the void and nothingness and um, 
and the work is already done, et cetera, et cetera. I think we all know intuitively that that is untrue. Um, but uh, I, I think that it doesn't even require experiential investigation um, into meditation techniques to identify these particular styles of teaching as I hesitate to say flawed, but contradictory, self-contradictory. Um, and wherever there is a contradiction, you end up with mysticism. And mysticism in and of itself uh, is it's a home for ideas, it's home for philosophy, um, and it makes it extremely difficult to escape those spaces. Um, there, there may be meditations which are bound up in mystical traditions, <clears throat> particularly those of um, Tibetan Buddhism, Zen. I, I think many people get a lot of value out of these. Um, and the teachers in these traditions are, are variously mystical. Um, but I, I think that mysticism, if you are going to venture that route, I haven't, um, and I find it personally very unappealing, mysticism. Um, if you're going to venture that route, my previous advice of applying healthy doses of skepticism applies tenfold, right? Um, this is, this is the, the danger of meditation and spirituality is that you'll get bound up with some guru, some gurudom in particular. Um, guru, literally, a teacher, there's nothing wrong with having a teacher, um, but seeing that teacher as somehow otherworldly or uh, above you uh, in in the sense of a hierarchy or anything like that um, quickly becomes a very risky proposition. As it does with anything else, you, when you were in university or if you're in university now, you don't look at your university professors this way. And uh, if you do look at them that way, you're quick to find out that they aren't saints, that they don't know everything. Um, and this is true of everyone that we respect in our lives. Um, and bubblegum Zen lends itself to this category of difficulty of mysticism and um, secretive uh, paradoxes, self-contradiction. Um, there are times when you may find that uh, an intellectual paradox, seemingly intellectual paradox, is useful in your meditation. Um, koans are, are used this way. I've never found koans particularly useful. Um, the structure of a koan is actually inherent in meditation itself. Um, in deeper meditative states, koans will, oddly enough, they'll emerge. You'll have this emergent um, idea or emergent question in your mind. Um, sometimes, not always. <clears throat> and the emergent question will seem like a paradox. Uh, it's like, oh, okay, here's an unsolvable question. And then as you continue to meditate, you'll find, oh, actually, here's the answer. Here's this unexpected answer to an unsolvable question. Well, it wasn't that neat. Um, and sometimes they're, um, sometimes they're little mind games that you're playing with yourself like you may have as a child. Um, linguistic paradoxes and mathematical paradoxes, um, existential paradoxes. And um, sometimes they're, they're quite, or, well, I was going to say, they are quite a bit more profound, but <laughs> perhaps they only feel more profound 
um, than a linguistic or mathematical paradox. But I, I think that that's probably the best place to explore those paradoxes is to find them yourself. They're there in your mind. There are plenty of paradoxes for you to discover. Um, cones weren't sent by the angels. They were thought up by someone probably in a meditative state, maybe. Um, and you don't need to go looking outside to other people's literature to say, oh, well, this is a nice koan. Okay, let me solve it with my meditation. Um, it, you can find the koans within the meditation itself. <clears throat> and then you can solve them within the meditation itself, which is the purpose of koans normally. And this root saves you from mysticism um, and saves you from the um, the self-satisfied nature of bubblegum Zen. And when I when I use this terminology, I don't I don't mean it to be terribly derogatory. Um, I I have found great use in zazen as a meditation technique. I think that is very practical, um, and not all Zen is taught in an obnoxious or mystical way. Um, I I found myself using the term bubblegum Zen only because it seems that in the West, in particular, Zen has this image surrounding it. And it's probably not so much Zen's fault as it is the perception of Zen. Um, and this image, I think, creates bubblegum Zen, um, the, the mysticism and the self-contradiction and um, the, uh, the sort of thinking and the sort of ego which would cause someone to say something to the effect of um, when you are ready to learn, the teacher will appear and stuff like that. Um, I don't think that these sorts of things help anybody <laughs> very much. Um, it may give you a small push in the right direction toward meditation, but ultimately um, it, the mysticism ends up being a roadblock in and of itself. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I'm thinking of a particular instance, actually. A friend sent me a Twitter thread, um, and in the interest of not bad-mouthing people openly, I won't mention the... Um, the username of uh, the person who created this Twitter thread. Um, but there is a, there is a, a, a certain flavor to Bubblegum Zen, and you'll start picking up on the phrases. Um, this, there is nothing to do, everything is already there, etc., but also ignore all meditation advice, including this, right? This inherently paradoxical, inherently self-contradictory um, sort of meditation instruction is, um, I think it frustrates people and rightly so. Uh, it's not clear, it's not actionable, and um, it, it's even less clear what the advantages of bothering with meditation are. Um, if you choose to go in this self-contradictory route. So that's today's advice. Beware of bubblegum zen. <laughs> um, take it with a grain of salt. We can do uh, 10 minutes of anapana now. I have my timer here, and if you want to get your timer ready, I will start it now.
that's our timer and that's all the time we have for today um, thanks for joining me and we will see you tomorrow take care of yourselves stay healthy bye